and welcome to High School Physics Explained and today I'm going to talk about Transformers. No, not the Michael Bay movie, but Transformers. Those objects that change electrical voltage into higher or lower forms. So let's quickly remind ourselves of the basics of a transformer. And here I have a picture of a transformer. In essence, a transformer takes an input voltage and either outputs either two types of voltages. It could either increase the voltage or it could decrease the voltage. If it increases the voltage, we refer to this as a step up transformer. If the voltage is decreased, we refer to this as a step down transformer. So for example, if you're watching this on your laptop, then you've used a step down transformer. It's plugged into your power supply. If you're in the States, it's 120 volts. If you're in Australia, it's 240 volts, but it puts out something like six volts on the other side when you plug it into your laptop. So it's been stepped down somehow. However, neon lights, for example, require much higher voltages than necessarily what they're plugged into. And so you might have a step up transformer. It's plugged into a 120 or 240 supply, but it actually may produce an output of around 2000 volts. Nonetheless, it's obviously higher and something's obviously going on inside the transformer. And that's what we want to discuss. So how does it actually then work? Well, it based on your understanding of electromagnetic induction. So if you have no idea about electromagnetic induction, I'd pause and watch a video on that or research a little bit more before we go on. But in essence, we start off with a coil. And that coil, of course, is connected to a voltage supply. In this case, we're going to connect it to an alternating current or an alternating voltage supply. And so what happens in that situation? Well, as we put an alternating supply there, what we end up having is a developing alternating magnetic flux. If I put another coil nearby it, that coil, as long as we close the circuit, will experience a changing flux. So we've got a changing flux over here at a given rate. And so let's say this is 60 hertz for the US supply or 50 hertz for Australian supply. We have a rapidly changing flux. And because of the fact that this coil is experiencing this rapidly changing flux, Faraday's law will state that there will be an EMF induced. Therefore, we're going to get a flow of electrons or a current in this aspect over here. Now, the reason why it is negative, and that is because of Lenz's law, that is, you're going to get a EMF that is in the opposition to the one that generated it. But the thing here as by itself clearly won't do very good. And there's a couple of things in the transformers that we need to add. First of all, you'll notice that the number of turns in this coil here and the number of turns in this coil is different. And that's really important if we want to create a step up or a step down transformer. But by itself, this is very inefficient. And so often what is connected to this whole situation is an iron core. And what this iron core does, it concentrates the magnetic field lines. So it becomes much more efficient. Not ideally perfectly, but nonetheless, it works a lot better. These cores have different numbers of turns. And so here I've introduced some variables here. VP and NP refer to the primary coil, which is our source here. And so obviously we have a primary voltage here and N represents the number of turns in the primary coil. Over here we have our secondary voltage and we have our secondary numbers of turns. And it is this variation that leads us to whether we get an increase in voltage or a decrease in voltage. So let's have a look at a closer situation the important thing here is, is that the ratio of turns here determines by how much the voltage is stepped up or stepped down. So what we can do is we say, look at the ratio of the number of turns from the secondary to the number of turns in the primary. That ratio happens to be equal to the ratio of the voltage of the secondary over the voltage of the primary. So in other words, if I have 500 turns here and I have 250 turns here, this ratio clearly becomes half. 
So if my input voltage over here actually is, let's say, 600 volts, because of the fact of the ratio here being half, I'm going to get an output voltage of only half 600, which is going to be 300. Now, the thing is, though, although the secondary voltage divided with the primary voltage is the ratio over the here, it's not the same for the actual current. In the current, it is in the opposite direction. So the current in the primary divided by the current in the secondary, notice the reverse, is that equal ratio. So in other words, the current in this section here will increase is if the voltage is decreased. And why is that? Well, the fact is, is that if I have a certain amount of power going into the actual transformer, then the power out must be the same, but it cannot be greater. Now, it won't be the same in the sense that we may have some lowering of power output over here. Um, why? Well, we'll discuss that in a moment, but clearly there will be some energy losses along the way. But the power cannot be greater because that would violate the conservation of energy. And so therefore, the power in must equal to the power out. Well, power, of course, is voltage multiplied by current. And so if you can see that the power in is the primaries over here, and this is the secondaries over here. And so as a result, you can see that if the primary voltage is reduced to a secondary voltage that drops, then you're going to see that the current has to go in the other direction. And a decrease in voltage will result in an increase in current. But let me explain this mathematically so you have a better understanding of what's going on and how this fits in with currents. And the important thing to remember here is, is that we have a source over here, and over here we're going to have our load. So this becomes our source, and this becomes our load. Because actually what is happening here is not just dependent on the transformer, but what we do in terms of connecting up this to, let's say, a device. So here I've connected to a 120 volt power supply, and I have a thousand turns over here, and I have a 500 turns over here. And as you can see, this is a step down transformer because the voltage is going to be dropped. And we can work that out. We know that the secondary number of turns divided by the primary number of turns is going to give me my change in voltage. So I'm going to have 120 over here. Clearly, this is my secondary voltage here. And my secondary voltage is now going to be half this, and I'm only going to get. 60 volts. Now, what we now, of course, do is connect this up to some sort of circuit. And I'm just going to connect it up to a simple resistor. Now, it does not need to be a simple resistor. It can be any device that converts electrical energy into other forms. So it could be your kettle, it could be your laptop, it could be something industrial. But for all intents and purposes, I'm going to make this really simple by making this a 5 ohm resistor. Now, clearly, that 5 ohm resistor will draw a certain amount of current, but we've already established that the potential difference across this particular resistor is going to be the voltage here that we have on the secondary end. And that, of course, is equal to 60. So this is going to be 60 volts. Well, this connected to 60 volts with a 5 ohm resistor means we are going to draw a current in this situation that can be calculated. Current is equal to V over R. And so we've got 60 over 5 and we clearly get 12 amps actually drawn in this circuit. So now comes the part, well, what happens over here? Well, if 12 amps is drawn in this circuit because this is 60 volts. What is the current drawn in here? Well, to be true to the conservation of energy, power in must equal power out. So power in is equal to obviously the 120 volts multiplied by the current. The power out is equal to, in our case, 60 volts 
and we've established already the current as 12 amps. And so you can clearly see that if I have a drop in voltage, the current here, in order for these two to be identical, must be equal to 6 amps. So a higher current is here due to the fact that we've placed the this voltage on a load and therefore the current here is lower. So that shows you how the power in and the power out establishes the conservation of energy. Now that's in an ideal circuit. That is a transformer that is not losing any type of energy as it, the energy is transferred from the primary coil to the secondary coil. Now practically that is not the case. So here's my transformer and here's another transformer and here's another transformer. The thing is, is that we have here this metal core. And the thing is that the metal core, although it's designed to increase the magnetic flux going through the coils, the problem is, is that itself it is experiencing a changing flux. And so what we're going to start to get is we're starting to get eddy currents. Now, if this was solid, these eddy currents would run in this direction like so because of the changing flux. Now, I'm not sure how this is connected, but I'm going to assume it's going to go in something to that effect in this direction. Of course, what do these eddy currents do? Well, they're going to heat up the core and that is going to be some power loss. So effectively, you're going to have a lower power loss as we go along. But how do you reduce these eddy currents? Well, you reduce these eddy currents by instead of having a solid iron core, you're going to have lamination. And lamination in this case is simply having the middle core actually made up of metal sheets separated by a thin layer of insulation. And what that means is it disrupts those eddy currents. So yes, there may be slight small eddy currents within each sheet, but they're significantly reduced by the fact that it's laminated. Now, the thing is, of course, is that there is some going uh, eddy currents formed, and so therefore it will heat up. And large-scale transformers need to have cooling uh, to in order to absorb a lot of the heat that is generated. You may also hear a buzz with certain transformers, and that's because what happens is, is that these, because of the fact that there are small, tiny eddy currents, and we're going to get magnetic effects, these pieces of metal can vibrate and therefore cause some sort of noise. Clearly, the heat and the noise take away from the initial energy input. And so as a result, your power output may be a little less, but not in such a way that it significantly undermines the usefulness of your transformer. So now let's have a look at electrical distribution and how transformers are really important in terms of their usefulness in raising the voltage up. So here I have a power plant and that power plant, of course, distributes electricity over long distances by the use of high voltage transmission lines with a number of transformers along the way. Now, why is this the case? Why not just have them going directly from point A to point B? Well, the important thing here is, is that the, if we were to transmit the electricity at 240 volts all the way to your house, and this is an Australian example over here, you have a quite a high level of power loss. So you've got power in over here and power out over here. But along the way, we have electricity going along long distances in our electrical lines, and that means some resistance and therefore some heating along the way. So the power in minus the loss of power along the way, which is equal to I squared R, will equal your power out. Now, clearly, the greater amount of current you have going through these wires, the greater the power loss. So how much you reduce the current? Well, that, of course, can be done by using a step-up transformer. As I told you, if I have an increase in voltage from the output of this transformer, what we're going to get ultimately is a decrease in current, a significant decrease. So as a result, the power plant might have a step-up transformer that pushes it up to 130 
thousand volts. Of course, as it's transmitted, you'll have some power loss, but when it comes down to, let's say, your local residential area, it's dropped to lower voltages and eventually to a voltage that is suitable to the home. Now, of course, again, what actually determines the current you get here is determined by the load you put on it. So you've got a 240 supply over here. Clearly, the current will be obviously increased as it goes over here. And of course, that would affect the overall current here. But of course, this is um, just a simple diagram here. Of course, we will have many houses connected to this substation. But the important thing is by stepping up the voltage, you reduce the current. And by reducing the current, you reduce the power loss. And so as a result, you have a far more efficient way of transmitting electricity using the alternating system. Now, a lot of systems these are use uh, very high voltage DC. I won't go into the details involved there. That involves the use of semiconductors. But certainly at the turn of the 20th century, AC was the preferred method simply because of its ability to be transformed. Well, I hope that's helped you understand transformers. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.